I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with the three minute cattle market update for Friday, January the 20th, where these fat cattle gained another three or four dollars this week and and maybe starting to get a little bit top heavy here. It seemed like a dollar ten was maybe a, a more comfortable place for that fat cattle market, although you know, of course, we want to gain as much ground as we can, but uh, we might be getting a little bit on the top side of these things, and I and, uh, wouldn't expect for them to get a whole lot higher. On the board, uh, late uh, middle to late week here, live cattle for April and Wednesday were up 40 cents. Thursday was up 47 to end the day on Thursday at 119.87, which is going to be a few couple dollars back from where they ended up selling here on Thursday. But uh, feeder cattle for March, Wednesday was down 50 cents, Thursday was up 60 cents, to end the day on Thursday at 130.15, and they're running a couple bucks behind as well. But uh, fat cattle, at Fed Cattle Exchange, uh, offered 4,100 this week, ended up selling a little over 3,500. And uh, you know, last week we said was a victory for them. They had the high for the week on there. And, uh, and those guys really got rewarded, those that are willing to put their cattle on there. This week, it's back to the same old thing. Uh, they sell those cattle on uh, Wednesday afternoon, 120 to 121 and a quarter. Did have one mixed load in South Dakota at 118.75 or a pin there. But the weighted average on that Fed Cattle Exchange was 120.52. I will say that it's doing the industry some good as it is spurring a little bit of trade midweek. We're not having to wait until Friday afternoon every week. Did last week and the, and the Fed Cattle Exchange uh, was the high for the week because the Packers really dug in. But, but uh, on a typical week, it's starting to spur the trade up a little bit earlier in the week. And uh, I think that's a good thing. But uh, they started looking around uh, uh, on Wednesday afternoon, and by the middle of the day on Thursday, they were selling cattle three to four dollars higher on a live basis. In the Southern Plains, 122 to 123. So the guinea pigs on the online sale didn't really get to uh, take advantage this week. They were just kind of used and abused. But uh, North Plains, 121 to 122 and a half, mostly 122 in the Northern Plains, and 195 dressed. That's five bucks higher dressed. So pretty darn good market. And, you know, a few months ago, we never dreamed that we'd be able to get uh, fat cattle this high this quick. But uh, box sheep cutout values are kind of holding steady at the lower levels that they got down to the last couple of weeks. The slaughter's been a little bit disappointing because we had that holiday there. Now on Monday, but uh, it's running uh, 55,000 lower than uh, last week and 35,000 behind the same week a year ago. Your actual uh, uh, dressed weights on your steers coming in two weeks behind, uh, they're inching back up again. Uh, they're back up to 905 pounds. That's a five pound gain just from the report that come out last week. But look at uh, feeder cattle. El Reno, Oklahoma had the first big sale of the week as those early week sales are just running on light receipts from the, the ice storm and the wet conditions that we had over the weekend. So El Reno had the first big sale of the week, 5,700 head. Feeders were fully steady, calves 2 to $5 higher. And, you know, we were just talking the last two weeks as these guys were having to pull their cattle off of wheat because the wheat had grubbed out and there just wasn't anything to support them out there. Well, it just takes an inch or two of, of uh, slow rain there and they're back in buying cattle again to turn back out on the wheat, but that's the way the wheat deal goes. But uh, another big thing out of El Reno is they're, they're going to go to three sales a week selling their uh, cows and bulls on Monday like they have been doing, but starting to sell the, their lighter weight cattle, their calves and stalker cattle on Tuesday, and then the big, bigger feeders and yearlings on Wednesday. So, uh, you know, they're just growing and quickly becoming the, the largest feeder cattle auction in the nation. You know, they've been top five for years and years, but uh, really overtaken Joplin and Oklahoma National Stockyards. And a lot of it has to do with uh, impeccable management there. And somehow they have been able in one day on Wednesday to separate out the calves and yearlings and steers and heifers, which most cell barn operators would tell you would be a complete nightmare, but they've been doing it. The buyers love it. You've got a good market there. It runs smooth and, and they're growing. But that's a, that's a good deal for uh, OKC West. But uh, you look at El Reno there on Wednesday at 4.30 in the afternoon. They sold 172 steers, 
weighed 812 pounds at 131.75. That's on Beef Market Central there. And look at a sale at, in Pratt on Thursday, where they, where their big feeders were gaining two or three dollars after word got out about the the fat cattle market there. But at Pratt they had 66 head of steers at noon on Thursday, weighed 862 at 135 and a quarter. That's three minutes. And we'll talk to you next week.